you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, City Council meeting for the City of Hudson for Tuesday, September 3rd. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Mayor Burchill? Here. District 1 Morissette? Here. District 2 Yaku? Here. District 3 Bernard? Here. District 4 T. Winkle? Here. District 5 Hoggett? Here. District 6 Vanslow? Here. At this point in our agenda, we uh, invite any of the public uh, that are here tonight to ad address the uh, City Council on any item that's not on the agenda. So if there's anyone here tonight that would like to speak at the Council, please come forward at this time. Doesn't seem to be a big rush to the microphone, so we'll move on. Consent agenda. To approve the regular meeting minutes of August 19th, 2013. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $433,163.57. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. To approve the issuance of six regular operator's licenses for the period September 4th, 2013 through June 30th, 2015 contingent on payment of any outstanding debt that is owed to the city. Additional information is available in the clerk's office on request. To approve the facade improvements for Bob Smith Sports Club at 601 Second Street as presented by Tom Tomorrow. To approve the schedule of common council meetings for 2014 as presented. To approve the issuance of an amusement device license to Gary Anderson doing business as Twin States Music and amusement device permits for 58 machines contingent on payment of any outstanding debt that is owed to the city. To place on file the St. Croix EMS Commission meeting minutes of August 21st, 2013 and the Community Access Board minutes of August 27th, 2013. And that is all. Move for approval. Second. Yakub? Yes. Vanslow? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. T. Winkle? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Morset? Yes. Right. Next item on the agenda is the uh, Planning Commission to consider Ordinance 5 13 petition for annexation for 3.88 acres at 430 Stage Line Road, uh, Richard and Janet Stout. Now, on August 9th, uh, the city received a re revised petition for annexation. The revised petition was submitted by Janet and Dick Stout, uh, the original petition for annexation was uh, um, submitted by Mr. Alan Greisbach. Um, in between that time, the property sold from Mr. Greisbach to the Stouts. Uh, Kathy and I have been uh, working on an annexation agreement. Uh, we reviewed that with Mr. Stout last week. He's agreeable to the conditions, stipulations of the annexation agreement. One of the conditions is, is that they would have to immediately have to pay deferred assessments on Stage Line Road, which comes to be really about $14,800. Um, other than that, it's uh, uh, approval of the annexations required um, by state statute under ordinance. So you have a choice of you're having first reading on ordinance tonight or suspending the rules and having um, passing ordinance tonight. Plan Commission recommends approval. I'll move to suspend. Second. Uh, roll call. Vanslow? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. T. Winkle? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Morset? Yes. Yakub? Yes. Questions, uh, comments on it? Danny, what, what does this do for the city? I mean, what, I, we're going to well, answer Well, essentially, Mr. Stout would not be annexing his property if he was choosing to retain it as a single family residence. Their desire is to come back to the city, ask for multiple family residential, and either build multiple family uh, apartments or a, a, a senior care um, dementia, Alzheimer type facility, one or the other. Um, our, our amount of multiple family property in the city of Hudson's, we only have two or three parcels in the entire city zoned under that. So, so I, that, that's what I'd be doing is providing additional multiple family property within the city of Hudson. I move for approval. Second. Uh, do you want to make a contingent on the annexation agreement? Yes. Please. Contingent upon the annexation agreement. 
Okay, is that okay with the seconder? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other discussions or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Danny. Um, Finance Committee, we had a recommendation for approval of the uh, Froth Engineering uh, Services related to Buckeye Street. Uh, Karen, why don't you, I don't want to say give us the shortened version. I think everyone was here. No, nope, Mary wasn't here. I wasn't here either. I was okay, here. so let's go through it again. I'll do it quicker, though. I'll yeah. condense it. Well, you don't have bit. to do it quicker. I just, uh, we re did a technical memorandum on the uh, condition of the Buckeye Street storm sewer. On August 1st, we were able to actually do a physical entry of the storm sewer and look at it. And existing conditions right now, if you're looking at the report on page one from 25A, 61 to 62 is a four by four box culvert. And also from 25A, 62 to 63 is also a box culvert. And then from that point on is a 54 inch uh, reinforced concrete pipe. You might hear it called as a RCP. And if you look at the pictures on page two, you can see the pictures of the box culvert at every cold joint. So where they constructed it, it's deteriorated and it is actually, you can stick the rod through it to the existing ground below. So the water is uh, infiltrating it at all the joints and there's a deterioration approximately every seven, 50 to 75 feet. The next page on page three, those are actually pictures at the structures where we access. And it's not a structure, it's basically a hole cut into the top of the box culvert with the casting on top of it. But there's work that's needed at the, the two access points into the box culvert. The 54 inch pipe now that goes down to the river, at every joint the reinforcement is exposed and you can also see right through to the ground under that uh, concrete pipe and that's showing on page five and on that run that's approximately 250 feet long there's a section 12 to 16 feet where the bottom of the pipe is gone it's it's just missing you can see that in the photo on page five so we looked at four options to to fix this and repair the storm sewer uh, option number one non-structural concrete well, it's kind of, you almost can think of it as a cosmetic repair. We would fix the major cracks and, and fill those up with a, a concrete patch and then install about a one inch uh, polymer concrete on the bottom. So we'd put it across the entire bottom and we'd do the same thing on the 54 inch RCP pipe. Option two is to fix the four by four box culvert. You fix all the joints and then we'd install a three to four inch thick steel <coughs> reinforced bottom across the entire box culvert. And we do basically the same thing on the 54 inch pipe. Fix all the, the joints and the major uh, m bottoms that are missing then put the three to four inch uh, new bottom on the pipe. Option three, we're gonna do the same thing with the four by four box culvert, put the three to four inch thick uh, reinforced concrete on the bottom. But on the 54 inch RCP pipe, we're proposing to put a cured in place pipe it's actually, it's like a felt liner and they put resin on it. And so you get this fiberglass lined pipe. And then option four is once again, fix the box culvert with the three to four inch reinforced concrete on the bottom, but to actually remove and replace that 54 inch pipe. So we'd actually be open cutting through the park and, and putting in the new pipe. Our recommendation was to pick option three it's gonna give you the longest life on that uh, the 54 inch RCP pipe. Part of the reason, well the main reason for the major deterioration is the freeze thaw cycle and the cured in place pipe would not be affected by the, the freeze thaw. So that's a quick summary of the report. Uh, finance recommended uh, item three, or option three, not item three. And then we put together a proposal to do the design and uh, construction inspection. We had the design phase for 32,000 lump sum. Permitting phase would be hourly estimated at $2,000. Now, since option three was uh, selected, the permitting phase should be very minimal. If it was gonna be open cutting, it would be much more intense than, than th using the resin in the pipe. And then the construction phase, we had that build at our hourly rate estimated at 10,500. So a total estimated fee of $44,500 plus mileage. 
Was this more than we had budgeted for Buckeye? About the 80,000? Yes. So still we just come out of the shift around capital outlay funds yep. for it? Come out of storm sewer. Storm sewer. Oh, storm sewer, yeah, yeah. And there, there are excess funds in storm sewer right now from prior years that can be utilized. I think we'd bonded, put in 200,000. 200, yes. And then we had, you know, was it 80,000? We had left, oh, 50,000 from last year. 50,000 square. And then we I know a, a question that was asked earlier that you may not have heard, but the box culvert was installed in 1937. Yeah, no. I, we I, don't know when the, the round pipe was installed. So are we going to be seeing this in other areas of town more than likely? More than likely, yes. I don't, Tom, are you aware of any other places? I know Tom does have to fill in the park all the time because of a sinkhole. And that is happening approximately where the bottom of the pipe is gone. You know, it's just carrying the, the soils with it. And he has been repairing a sinkhole at that location. Yeah. I'm just curious how many more of these we have around that's going to, that we need to think about repairing. More than you think. That is would it, be my guess. I would assume. <laughs> Well, this will be the second. If you look at the one from the Malibu project that we did yeah. last year, or that was finished huge. up this year, I guess, yeah. that was another one that was... That was a failure. Yep. Is that about the time we started using storm sewers historically, or did they go back into the 1800s, or...? I'm not sure about that. I know concrete pipe started in, I believe it was in the 50s. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Any other questions? Is there a motion to approve? Has that been? Uh, I'll move to approve. Is there a second? Option three. Okay. Second. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Karen. Uh, next item on the agenda is establishing of a special revenue fund providing <coughs> funding for the June related storm costs. Neil. One of the things we, the proposal would be, would be to establish a fund where, out of which we can pay all the storm related costs. One of the things that we're experiencing now is we've already paid to date $133,000 and that's payroll, you know, supplies, contractual services and whatnot. And what ends up happening is, you know, we're continually running afoul with our budgetary controls. I mean, a good example, I think that we mentioned in the finance uh, committee meeting is that <clears throat> to date in the in the shade tree fund we've spent you know 30 even for contractors we've spent about thirty five thousand dollars which is about equal to the shade tree budget for the year so by establishing a special revenue fund and transferring these costs that we've already paid out of the general fund over to the special revenue fund we'll have better comparability with past and future years but probably more importantly is we'll have an accurate accounting of what the storm costs have uh, one of the things that we discussed was in terms of accountability for the costs and the intention for this fund would be to try to do, set up the accounting so it tracks the various projects that, uh, that will be developed with FEMA because each you know, type of projects is going to be, you know, is going to be uh, set up with a separate project worksheet with an estimated cost. <laughs> and so we'll try to keep that keep our accounting in the special revenue fund in alignment with the reporting for FEMA. And ultimately, when we get funds back from FEMA, uh, we will know, you know, if there is some kind of difference on and beyond what we would what we're proposing to advance. And that advance total was 100. The recommendation for the finance committee was $150,000. Anything remaining after the project's completed would then be transferred back into the general fund as its source. But uh, you know, it's going to make things cleaner for future accountability for the general fund, but also establish better accountability for our costs and any reporting that we have with FEMA. Questions? Just out of curiosity, how much, how long does it take to get FEMA money? <laughs> a lot of it depends. The, there's really two types of projects. This is from my experience, and you know, there's a, a kickoff meeting this Friday with FEMA, but based upon a disaster I was involved with before, they classify things as small projects and large projects. Small projects, they will reimburse you for, uh, I think it's within 60 days. 
And I think those are projects with the cost under, I, I think the number is you know, 50 or $60,000. Larger projects are done on a reimbursement uh, basis. However, once those projects are completed and the project worksheet is turned in, then you're probably looking at, I think, 90 days. So I mean, you know, the real key is going to be, you know, the tough part is going to be having to go through the whole bid process to get a lot of this work done. I mean, a good example that we talked about at finance was a lot of the stormwater uh, projects, you know, you may be able to bid out the engineering or get the engineering done, but the work's not going to get done until sometime next year. Right. So, I mean, it drags on, but this will at least give us some seed money so that, you know, we can at least, you know, get moving with the projects and establish that accountability. Okay. okay. We have a motion and a second. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Park Board number 9A. Consider letter of support requested by the St. Croix County Sportsman Alliance for the installation of a fishing platform on Lake Malu. Kurt, do you have anything to add to this? Is it uh, between Tom and I, I'm sure we can. <laughs> I, I was hoping Mr. Malik would be here so he could explain it. Um, it's just their, their sports, uh, yeah, the Sportsman's Alliance. They try to do projects around the county each year. And he said that they had not done anything in Hudson either in a long time or ever, if I remember correctly. And I believe at this point it's, it's just a letter of support. I'm sure everything would need to be approved through the park board to, to this council. But in the meantime, what he's looking for is the letter of support that gets the ball rolling with the state for the funding, I believe. Okay. And it's really just, it's, and I'm not totally up on all the, the names of the fishing ponds around town, but um, west of 2nd Street on Lake Malalu, evidently there's an area that is very popular for fishing and it includes putting some fish cribs and then a not so much a pier as a just a, a platform for people to fish off of so okay i don't know if tom tom you have anything add else to anything add anything to it or uh, not really i think you covered everything okay you know, I'm really trying to picture where this is at. It's right uh, just east of the dam. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. You know the, the little spillover dam that comes yeah. into it? Yeah. It's, the parking lot's kind of there already. I just drove by there this morning. Um, and it's just a lot of brush along the south shore there. Should be a good spot for fishing, I would think. Yeah, and, and I should add, for the parking area, that's actually part of their proposed yeah, project. Yeah, I saw that, so I, it's already kind of widened out. But, right. Yeah. Okay. And they're saying we won't have to maintain it. That, what I is, read. that is correct. Well, we're not maintaining the road. <laughs> have you ever driven down there? <laughs> <laughs> Mary, what, what do you re maintain the, <laughs> the platform yes. or the road? Yeah, I wasn't road. talking about the road, <laughs> okay. but thanks for that input. <laughs> sure. I forgot how, how many holes are there. Oh. Whose land is that? Does anybody know? Tom, do you know whose land that is? This is part of the uh, bridge or the dam fund and all that good stuff. Yeah. Okay. So all, so all three of us right. have to so go really it's, for it to happen. This is, this is literally a start. Yep. A letter of support from us. Yep. And we'll see if we get the money or not. Right? I believe the village just approved or sent. Uh, they have we'll, since. Yep. The, okay. Is there a motion to send a letter of support? Yeah, I'll move to send a letter of support. A second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Just being honest, Mary. I don't, yeah. It's not my. Okay. It's not my chair. <laughs> uh, update: uh, unfinished business. Uh, Karen. Projects. What's going on? Well, the construction for the 2013 street improvement project started today. They were out on Hanley Road, starting to do removal of curb and gutter. So we did have our. Uh, 
pre-construction meeting on August 26th. Just to let you know, the contractor plans to first work on Hanley, then go to the Gateway area, and then O'Keefe. And if he still has time, he wants to try to get uh, Crestview done this year too. So he is, uh, he'll keep us informed on the progress of that one. Uh, Lake Malu storm sewer outfall number two. They got the erosion control mat, which is basically the restoration and the seating ha has been placed. Red Cedar Canyon, the curb and gutters in, the gravel's down, and they are actually going to be placing uh, asphalt tomorrow. So the vibrations should be slowing down in your neighborhood. And then uh, Stage Line Road Roundabout. This is uh, why it's always teamwork, because last week when I was up here, I didn't know what was happening. After the council meeting, we met with uh, the contractor and everybody involved, got us involved to be out there inspecting. And the storm sewer has been installed and the subgrade's been prepped and they're actually gonna be pouring uh, curb and gutter this week. Wow. They're on the fast track uh, for that project and they want to be placing asphalt the week of September 16th. Who's if, doing that? If the weather cooperate, cooperates. Who's, what was that, Randy? Who's doing that contract? Uh, Zappa construction so it'll be com hopefully complete by the end of that week mm -hmm. uh, well the first layer of uh, asphalt will be down right but the road will open up if weather permits I could see it opening up that that week oh, weather permitting everything goes as plan they do have a lot of concrete work out there a lot of curb and gutter they have a four splitter island medians at each approach and then a, a truck apron so if the weather can hold out and they can pour the concrete, it could be it could be black by the end of September. Who's in charge of the vegetation in the middle? Uh, the vegetation in the middle right now, I know, is there's all the rules about uh, roundabouts and what can be put in the middle for sight distances and safety. And uh, the BKBM, the designers for that, has, has the landscaping in there. Okay, we don't have to have like a forest, right? Right, Thank and you. and you no can, no well, hard objects. Call that to the Hanley Road roundabout. No hard objects in there. And okay. Who set the road schedule? The contractor, or you, or we? Somewhere? On the 2013 stream improvement project, we set it. At, at first, we wanted to try to get everything done this year, but we got calls from the contractors on bidding that it was a bit aggressive, and so we changed it that the base bid, the two items that were base bid, which was Hanley Road and Gateway area would be done in 2013. And then the everything else that was an alternate, the final date for completion was in uh, June 30th, 2014. Oh. Oh, and why was it set that way? Because we were getting, the bidders were saying it was too aggressive and it was gonna be too expensive to do it, to have everything done by the end of the year. Hmm. It was discussed at the council meeting when this was being discussed. No, 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 I, yeah, but I wanted to know who picked, okay, we're doing Hanley, we're doing this one first, we're doing this one oh, second. We did, uh, we ranked them in order. Uh, working with uh, Tom and myself, we ranked which roads should be on the base bid, and the contractor, we said Hanley and Gateway, it had to be done this year. It didn't matter which one they did first. And then they picked O'Keefe, and the reason they picked O'Keefe is there, was, there isn't that much concrete work out there so they can get that done. That's what's taken the time is all the concrete removal and replacement. And also the businesses on Gateway, some of them their whole driveway entrance is being removed and replaced. Because they're a business, we can't take them out, so we're doing half and mm -hmm. then let it sit until it hardens and then doing the other half. So all, all that additional work is taking time. If we didn't have to do the concrete work, the mill and overlay would be, would be done this year on all the streets. I think you picked the streets that were most impacted for most of the folks in the in our city, correct? Right. Okay. Any other questions for Karen? Thank you. Uh, communications from any uh, council person, city attorney, um, city administrator. If not, I'd like to get a motion to move into closed session. Someone. Is there a second? Second. We need a roll call on that? Yes. Yes, roll call, please. Yakub? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Banslow? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Morissette? Yes. T. Winkle? Yes. Okay. We're in closed sessions. Neil, if you could stay in.